Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Heather. Today I'm so excited to be sitting down to chit chat with you about books. Today's video is a book tag. I love doing these. I hope that you're enjoying watching these. Today's is super special because it is the Clue board game book tag. So all of the prompts are going to be dealing with characters and weapons and rooms within the game of Clue. So it's really exciting. I hope that you are ready to grab a cup of coffee. Let me know what you guys are drinking. Are you drinking cider? Are you drinking coffee? Are you drinking tea? Let me know what you are drinking this time of year. So like we're getting close to mid-September and true autumn. So I'm really excited about that. And I am drinking pumpkin spice pretty much every day. The tag was originally created by the Bookish Bryant and the Bookish Knitter. I will have both of their channels or this video specifically linked below if you would like to see their answers and go show some support. It was such a fun tag. I'm excited to be doing it. No one personally tagged me to do it. I just stumbled across it in the booktube world, but I will be tagging some people to do this at the end, so make sure you stay tuned. We are going to start off with Mr. Green, and it is a book that takes place in the UK. The book I've chosen for this prompt is a book by Ruth Ware. I read this earlier in the year, and it is in a dark, dark wood. Now, on the front, Reese Witherspoon prepares me to be very afraid. Oh, to be very scared. I really wasn't. It was a really good book, and it was so funny. Um, I have to be very careful with this because I'm passing this off to someone else. And I don't want there to be any spoilers. However, if you are a fan of Ruth Ware, you know that she is the queen of a slow burn and at the end all of the action just kind of like goes by in a blink of an eye. This one follows a character named Nina who is going to a hen party which is like a bachelorette party and she's reluctant to go, kind of gets pinned to go by one of her friends and this whole group getting together really doesn't see each other all that often so it's very awkward and there are new friends in the person who's getting married, the bride's life, that the others have never met before. So just their quirks getting to know each other within this weekend <laughs> was pretty entertaining. Um, there was a lot of drinking and there was mention of drug use, just to preface that if it is something that you are interested in picking up. Um, I will say that I skimmed over a lot of those conversations where they were engaging in those activities because it's just not something that I want to entertain. And I understand that this was, to me it was not a, a plot game changer. It didn't really have anything to do with the plot other than they were just hanging out and that happened. So I didn't feel like I was really missing any of the content that I needed to know. It was unnecessary in my opinion, so I did skip those parts. However, the ending of this book was so crazy. I didn't expect it at all. Um, she has a way, Ruth has a way of making you think this is happening and there's a whole sleight of hand situation happening. So she is so good. She is very talented. So In a Dark Dark Wood is the choice for this prompt and I have to say I really still am in love with this cover but it's time to see it on its merry way to someone else. Number two is Colonel Mustard, a book featuring a character in the military. You guys know what a fan I am of Nicholas Sparks and so for this prompt I had to pick Dear John. I sadly do not have a copy of that but I loved the book so much and I honestly loved the movie even more which is why I haven't purchased the book. Of course the book and movie is older. The movie came out in 2010 with Channing Tatum and is it Amanda Seyfried? Is that how you say her name? I'm not sure. Um, but they are the two main characters. If you have never heard of it, if you've never seen it, I highly recommend that you do. Number three, Miss Peacock. A book that you feel is patriotic. So if you're not from the US, you don't have to pick a red, white, and blue patriotic book, but just pick whatever you feel is patriotic to you. And the book I chose was the only one I felt that was patriotic in any sense, and it was about a US president, Thomas Jefferson, and the Tripoli Pirates. It is a forgotten war that changed American history. I haven't read this yet, so I don't have a whole lot um, to share with you about it, but if you've read it, 
let me know if you enjoyed it without any spoilers. I had planned on reading this in July, but I got really, really busy and I didn't have a chance to read this around the 4th of July. So I plan on doing that in the future. Um, my TBR just won't stop growing. Number four, a book where the main character is part of the household staff. You've probably heard me talk about this book and this is The Kitchen House by Kathleen, can't even say her name, oh my gosh, Kathleen Grissom. I have read this book so many times. I absolutely love it. I cannot, cannot recommend it enough. It's heartbreaking, but the perseverance for a better life and just that vision of a better day and for freedom and dignity just it rips your heart out but it truly shines in here it's it's forever going to be one of my top five reads of all time number five library a book about books i did choose is midnight library by matt Haig. is that how you say his name i apologize if i mispronounced that but it says, somewhere out beyond the edge of the universe, there is a library that contains an infinite number of books, each one the story of another reality. One tells the story of your life as it is, along with another book for the life you could have lived if you had made a different choice at any point in your life. While we wonder how our lives might have been, what if you had the chance to go to the library and see for yourself? Would any of these other lives truly be better? So, do you remember the Choose Your Own Adventure books? It kind of reminded me of that, like a grown-up version of that. So, that's pretty cool, right? So, I definitely want to actually get a physical copy of it to read. And the audiobook was giving me a little bit of stress for some reason, and I don't know why, but it just wasn't for me. So, I'd rather read the physical copy. Number six, Kitchen, a book that is a culinary mystery. What I'm going to share with you is the one that I actually just finished, and it is Pumpkin Spice Scare. Sorry for the glare on that and for the fingerprints. Um, it's such a cute little cover. Now, like I said, these are cozy mysteries, and the main character moved in with her great aunt after a breakup, and she is basically discovering her love of baking and there's just a huge supportive cast there of course is a murder in every book and there is a new recipe in every book and it's a new cupcake she is trying to perfect and at the end of each book you do get the recipe that she's working on so it is a lot of fun it is something fun to read kind of a couple of chapters before you go to bed unwind a little bit so you're not reading something super heavy and yeah, I know her fifth book. I can't remember what it is, but I know her fifth book is out already. And I've already read one through four. I just haven't read the fifth book yet. Um, I went through the first three rather quickly. And then it took me a while to pick up this one because I started reading that in September. I wanted to read it more headed toward into fall since it was pumpkin spice. But they're really, really cute. Some of the language is repetitive. Um, I think if you guys watched the live book chat that we had earlier in the month, we or I talked about um, how she constantly mentions Sweet Waterfalls, like the, the writer constantly mentions that. And it that becomes obnoxious. But other than that, they are super sweet. And I will continue to read all of them that she puts out in the series because I really do like the characters. I love the best friend bond in there and then like I said I love um, how the great aunt is just a good support system for her. So it's really awesome, really cute read. If you don't like to read some of the heavier stuff that I mention sometimes that might be a good route to go. I am finding more and more that the heavier stuff just weighs on me a little bit too much so I'm trying not to read as much of that, um, but these are these are really so much fun. So it kind of still gives you the edginess um, without being too scary, if that makes any sense. All right, number seven, Conservatory. A book or cover that features plants or trees. Um, I mean, I have a few that I feel like could work for that. I mean, in a dark, dark wood, you could see like the tree branches in the dark, but I think that I'm going to pick the lake. This was a YA 
thriller that I read over the summer and there are some pretty little flowers here at the bottom and then I love how the trees are reflecting in the actual lake. So that is why I chose this one. This is about teenagers returning to a summer camp um, as camp counselors and so I know I've mentioned this before and it's kind of comparable to The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. They kind of have similar plots. I mean, it is a little bit different between the two, but they are kind of similar and they both are good in their own way. So I really do like this one. This is one I would read again. Um, and I mentioned before, I think that I did like this one over the, um, the Riley Sager choice. So don't hate me. <laughs> Number eight, Hall, a book that takes place in a mansion. And what I chose for this prompt is by Ruth Ware. It is The Turn of the Key, and I have talked about this one before. A girl answers a ad to be a housekeeper slash caregiver of small children. And like there are certain events that take place that lead her to believe that the house is haunted. There is a tragedy that takes place and she ends up in or on trial for murder and in jail for murder and she did not commit the murder and so the book basically is her giving a backstory to her lawyer of everything that happened and then like there are so many revelations that happen toward the end you're like I didn't see that coming this is a really good book I would read this one again I'm sorry for the glare it's very very reflective and it is in a library um one of those covers from the library so anyway I do love this book if you love suspense and something not being obvious um, this is definitely not predictable it wasn't for me so I really did enjoy this one number nine candlestick a book that takes place or was written prior to 1802 so it's really funny because I was going through all of my good reads and I'm like I, I got nothing y'all I've got nothing I'm like unless I want to say the Bible. Can I just use that then? <laughs> and then earlier when I was reading the back of this, the very first line on the back of this Andrew or the Thomas Jefferson book is when Thomas Jefferson became president in 1801. Are you serious? <laughs> like I looked for hours through my Goodreads and was trying to find something. I'm like, I've got nothing. I had it all along. And I would have known had I read it, but let's just stick with the King James Version Bible. Okay. <laughs> Number 10, Gun, a book featuring a police officer. So for this, I picked um, the Janet Ivanovich. Did I say it right this time? I know I get hit with the pronunciation police a lot. One of the main characters in the Stephanie Plum series is Joe Morelli. And I really like the first three of these books. This one I just grabbed is two for the dough because I have two and three, but I don't have one. Um, or I would have just grabbed the first one. This is the oldest one that I do have. I don't know about you, but if a series goes longer than like four books, I kind of tap out. I don't know if you guys are that way. Um, but that's probably why I didn't finish this series is because I felt like I was drowning, like I couldn't keep up with them as they were coming out. So anyway, I will eventually get to them, but let me know if you've read the entire series. I am very, very interested to know that because they are fun. They are absolutely fun. So I need to revisit those again. Number 11, Wrench, a book with a skilled trade. Now I picked Cinder for this. It's part of the Lunar Chronicles. And I was very shocked. Like going into this, I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't expect there to be a cyborg. I thought this was going to be a Cinderella retelling like we're used to seeing with the Disney um, Twisted Tales or something like that. I had no idea that this was a completely out of the box, yet surprisingly amazing retelling. So it's a sci-fi, which I don't typically read too much of. And I just was so impressed with how this book started. Um, there is very sensitive content. It is right in the middle of a pandemic plague. So that is a little touchy. 
and if you are triggered easily by that then I would say don't read it. This was really surprising how much I liked it. Number 12, Dagger. A book where a realistic murder takes place. Pick one. Oh my goodness. Okay, so for this, I decided to actually go for a true crime book. I actually sent it to Erica at Erica Diocampo, and it is House of Evil by John Dean. It is a torture slash slaying story of Sylvia Likens in Indiana. So basically, two girls, and Sylvia was the oldest one, was left with a single mother while their parents went off with like a traveling carnival. So they would her parent, their parents were sending money back to the single mother um, for keeping them and taking care of them. And I don't know specifically what triggered, I forget the name, I forget the lady's name, the, the lady who's taking care of them. I don't know what triggered her specifically, but she just had zero use for Sylvia and she ends up locking her in the basement. And like, this is true story. So you can go Google it. There was a movie adaptation as well. And I can't, think oh it's an American crime um and if I'm not mistaken Sylvia is portrayed by Ellen Page it is hard to watch if you don't like things like that just be prepared I'm sure like I'm giving you your general trigger warning right here um she does have her children to assist in torturing her so it's very very sad that that even happened but it did and um i read it because like that is my home state and i did know about that happening just because it's common knowledge and um it's just a very tragic and sad thing that happened so that is why i wanted to share that because like <laughs> it would take me all day to just narrow something down here um, because so many of these, I mean, the world has gotten so crazy, as you guys well know, that some of these things that we think are far-fetched murders in novels are really not as far-fetched anymore when you read some of the news headlines and things like that. So for that, I just went with a true crime story and I felt like that was the best route to go. That is it for all of the questions of the Clue Board Game book tag. I am going to be tagging a few people now. And if you do not want to do it, then there's absolutely no pressure, but I did want to um, extend that out to get everyone else's opinions on these prompts because I thought it was so much fun. The very first person I'm going to be tagging is Abby from the Disney Sisters. And next I would like to tag Nina. And you thought I was going to say from Wrestling with Disney. So yes, she does have that channel, but I am so excited to announce that she has a new channel called wrestling with books where you're going to be seeing all of her book content and i just hope that you will go over and support her new endeavor there and of course you still follow her on wrestling with disney for all of the disney and wrestling and other fun fandoms but she wanted to start a channel for her book tags and reviews and wrap-ups and things like that and I completely applaud that and I support that 100%. So please go and check out both of her channels and the same for Abby as well over at the Disney Sisters. The next person I'm going to be tagging is Emma from Emma and John, You're Welcome. And then Nicole from Irresistible Magic. I hope that you can fit this into your very, very busy filming schedule. I know this is a very busy time of year for you, but I would love to see your answers when you have time to cozy up with a hot cup of coffee and talk all things books. And the next two that I would love to invite is Robin from Oh Hello Robin. And then I mentioned her earlier about her love of presidential reads, and that is Dana the Mouse Diva. So I hope all of you will have time to film this. And again, if not, no pressure. I just wanted to include some of my book loving gals on this. And of course, I didn't tag everyone in our Disney book community because I wanted to leave some open for others to tag as well. So if you are not tagged, don't fret. I know one of our other friends will tag you as well. And again, if you do not have a channel and would like to play along, I would love to hear your answers below. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you guys have a blessed day and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.